Hello everybody. I'm sure that during this time of quarantine, you're probably needing to get out of the house once in a while. So this is an activity that you can do once you finish your nature walk for the day. There's also a uh, worksheet to go along with the lesson that I will have linked below. So you're gonna need a handful of leaves. They must be green. And then try to grab a different range of leaves. Don't grab all the same. Next, you're going to need a white sheet of paper. I'm just using regular printer paper. And then grab a spoon or something that you can use to rub the leaves onto the paper. These are the standards that this lesson can be applied to. I chose two different grades, third and fourth. However, today we're going to be focusing on a specific part of plants called chlorophyll. So why are we rubbing leaves onto paper? You've probably noticed this before, but when you rub leaves onto something, it normally leaves a green mark. This is because of chlorophyll. It's a green pigment that is found in almost all plants and other organisms. It's also involved in the photosynthesis process because it allows plants to absorb light. But we're not going to get too far into that process. Think about these few questions before you begin. If you have several different types of leaves, think about what leaves you think will produce your green color. How do the leaves feel? Do you have some leaves that are waxy? Next, I placed all the leaves on a sheet of paper and labeled them. This isn't something you have to do, but this is just an extra step I took. Now you want to take your white sheet of paper and fold it in half, hamburger style. I added in about three leaves in between the paper and took my spoon and rubbed it on the outside. In some areas, I pressed more firmly than other areas. Once you finished rubbing your piece of paper, I did this for about 45 seconds, open up your sheet of paper and look to see what you've created. I added in a bay leaf, holly tree leaf, and sage. And as you can see, the sage produced way more color than the other leaves. The bay leaf didn't really produce any color and the holly tree leaf showed just a little bit but this may be because both the bay leaf and holly tree leaf are a little waxier. So that was the first method that you can use to rub your leaves onto the paper. Now I'm gonna show you guys the second method. I took another sheet of paper and decided to directly rub the leaves right onto it. Here I started off with a mini rose flower leaf, rosemary, and cilantro. As you can tell, the smaller the leaf, the more difficult it may be to rub onto the paper. So you may need a couple of leaves if you're using smaller ones like I am. I've noticed that some students like to be more creative, obviously, so you can paint pictures with your leaves and you'll definitely need more leaves for that. So here are my results. 80% of my leaf collection produced a lot of green color as well as some brown color in here and there. The two waxier leaves, the holly tree leaf and bay leaf, produced little to none. However, I believe that if it wasn't for their waxy coating, the green would probably be more prominent. Now I'm going to show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of the two different ways you can get the leaves to produce their green coloring. So here are the leaves that I did first. And then as you can see, just by rubbing the leaves onto the paper, it is much easier and produces much better results. You can even create your own pictures with the leaves if you wanted, like I said before. As you wrap up your activity, I want you to think about what method would work best for you, what kind of results do you think you would produce if you used other kinds of leaves, and if you were to do this activity in the fall when the leaves are changing colors, what colors do you think would be produced onto the paper? Thank you so much for watching.